And I have started recording. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the January 20th uh, DNI, Chaos DNI meeting. So um, today I have a few agenda items that I want to talk about. Um, I'll share the minutes here in the chat. And so the hope is, is that we can get through, first of all, the chaos metrics release today, and that's first and foremost. And then the second is Matt has been doing some, Matt Snell has been doing some work on the DNI badging program. So I thought maybe we could take a, a glance at that. It's in its early stages, but, you know, early and early feedback is good. And then the outreach chief um, program. So we haven't until sometime in February to kind of set on a series of projects, but I have started the outreachy proposal and I'm meeting with Sage Sharp on oh. Thursday to get a little bit more insight on the outreachy project and just kind of how um, chaos can be, you know, um, better <laughs> at trying to participate in that project. Yeah, Sage should be super helpful. Yeah, so Sage offered to, to talk and um, that was not a an offer I was going to turn down. So yeah, exactly. I worked with them at Intel, and and they were yeah pretty yep. pretty great. Yep, perfect. So okay, so those are the three things that I have. Does anybody else have anything else that they would like to bring up with the DNI side of things? So for um, Kevin and Sala, uh, here are the minutes. Yeah, I was gonna bring up that Matt was saying that he was not going to attend on Mondays because of a class conflict. <laughs> it's, it's MLK day, so I'm here. I can, <laughs> I, I can attend one time this semester, and this yeah. is the time. <laughs> but, so I was just removing that, like I was primed to come in and be like, today's agenda is, and then I was like, sorry. Oh, <laughs> No, I'm just joking. But yeah, like I, I honestly don't have anything from my end. Okay. Other than, um, um, just, just wondering when we're gonna kick back into gear. Are we back into gear? Do we think there's maybe a time uh, until yeah, we I'll get put that on the summit? As Don was pointing out, we this has been DNI has been a kind of a the most problematic working group in terms of time. Yeah, it has. I don't know why, but um, so we'll talk about that. On the All agenda. right. So, um, so if you take a look at the minutes, if you click on the DNI issues, so you'll see that Kevin has, thank you, Kevin, posted all of these issues for the different metrics. And just as a reminder, some of these metrics were part of the first release, but we're also, we can also look at them again. Um, and then a set of the metrics are part of the second release. So you're, what you're seeing here is the entirety of all DNI metrics as part of, um, as part of the issues. Um, and I think the biggest thing is we had also done the new templates like for all the working groups. Um, so I, my hope is, is that we can just kind of work through these two, four, six, eight, nine today and maybe we could just start with issue 261, which is release candidate comments for sponsorship. And I've been going through the metrics just to identify templating things. So my comment, comments here are certainly not structural. Would anybody like it if I shared my screen or are you following along? I think sharing the screen really helps. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, we'll we have to pose just, it. Just somewhere all together. Yeah, thank uh, you. You bet. All right, that should work. And so the hope is, is that we can take a look at these today and um, suggest changes or Give it this stamp of approval. Uh, 
Um, I almost remember this was maybe under common, was it, or was it always under DNI? It was always under DNI. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I guess my brain didn't do is, is sponsorship a formal process? I don't know. What does that mean, Kevin? Uh, I mean, so reading through the description, it's kind of a it's kind of a soft definition of what sponsorship is. And I'm, I'm just I'm wondering if there is is a, a more formal understanding of what uh, of what sponsorship is, and if there are mechanisms within projects that say you know, this is what sponsorship is and this is how you do it. I see. I suspect that it tends to be a bit more informal, whereas mentorship programs tend to be, tend to be kind of the formal things within a project. So like Kubernetes, you have loads of mentorship programs. Um, and I think the sponsorship stuff happens more informally, for example. Does that help how you read this, Kevin? I'll also keep in mind that's one data point. And it might not be true for, for all oh, for sure that's guaranteed true. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my my problem with the description is is uh, it's a lot of talk about what a mentor is and what a sponsor isn't. But there's not a whole lot of talk about exactly what it means to be a sponsor. Right. So it's Which maybe is fine. I if it if it's if it's just this if it's kind of a fuzzy thing, then it's a fuzzy thing. Yeah, personally, I've never kind of differentiated the two, mentor and sponsor. Yeah, the the difference to me is seems to be in that one sentence that says you're putting your reputation online, <laughs> which I I'm not sure. Yeah, that's I'm why not I sure think... if that's like a really important distinction or I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, oh, sorry, I interrupted. But I do, I do think that is actually the important distinction because and I think that's what makes these programs less, less formal than than mentorship programs, because it really is. It really is sort of an individual who's established in the project going to bat for someone who's not. Um, and so you can't really, you can't really put programs around that because I can't be like, I'm not going to take on some random person and put my reputation on the line for somebody that, that I don't even know as part of some program, but you can help people encourage them to do that for, for people that they are willing to sponsor people that they're willing to get to know and put their reputation on the line for. Okay. But I, it feels, it feels more, it feels more of a relationship than a program to me. And, and like you, I had never really thought about this as being different than mentoring until Georg started talking about it as a part of defining this metric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, in the resources, the last link seems to like the first, uh, the second one, hold on, sorry. Um, let, let me first report that um, the second link seems to be a purchase only PDF. Um, and like in the list at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so I should have checked that the links were. Which one? Um, uh, I think the, 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 the one right there. Yeah, yeah, the one where you're going. Oh. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> uh, Can somebody else confirm that? Yeah, it looks like I had to purchase it as well. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. And then uh, number four is the one that really relates to our um, ambiguity or our sense of ambiguity about the, you know, the formality of sponsorships or the relevance of them. Uh, to be entirely honest, the first time I heard about sponsorships was in the meeting where I ended up PRing sponsorships. So um, I always thought there were mentorships and then um, 
you know, uh, I, I never really heard about sponsorships and open source. You know, not okay. that I have much experience to rely on, but yeah. And this is the first that that is the first link. The yeah, I'm going by the number. <laughs> no, no, no. So the, number number four yeah. sponsors need to stop acting like members. I mean, that's this. That's this yeah. reference right here. So I mean, that does start the. Yeah. So I'm not outside of the differentiation between sponsor and mentor. I'm not hearing a lot, and I don't think that. It, it sounds like um, this has been a fairly well thought out metric. I wasn't part of the building of this one. Is everybody okay with where it's at right now or do we need some additional? I only PR'd it. So could, could we just double check that the uh, links between the brackets like four and one here are actually working because um, if, if we just need to fix one of the links that worked. See, I thought, OK, that worked too. Uh, that was it. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I guess, uh, yeah, like, uh, I mean, I PR'd it. So I, I did a little bit of like okay. uh, due diligence before. But um, yeah, like I, did, I wasn't there for the discussions or anything. So, so I will, um, outside of this meeting, I'll go through and kind of clean up these things. Because the, again, these are just editorial. A lot of these are editorial, and may propose to just remove the link if it's a pay link, or or indicate that it's a pay link. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, but but to be fair, under number two, there the second link is actually a link to the PDF itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's hosted from uh, Stanford, Edu. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know how how. Um, Sorry, I'll be right. Yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to be sharing the link to a PDF that you would pay for otherwise, uh, even if it's on the internet, right? Everything is on the internet. So uh, I'll just. Is that, is this document, oops, is that, ah, is this document that from that link, you think? I, I, I believe at least it's part of okay because uh yeah because um i i think the the top one will give you the whole like sponsor effect 2.0 yep and then um and then the key role of sponsorship is part of i see i think what i'll do is i'll probably just label this as a pay link and leave this. It's hard for us to know whether or not Stanford has done due diligence or not. Yeah, I, and, and I would do some uh, editing to the list because, you know, every bullet point should be cohesive. It shouldn't, like, have two bullet points on the same level. Okay. One is the title and one is the link. That was... Uh, okay, so I, in an effort to move through all of the issues, edit... You. Sorry about that, but you know, like you, you're you're proposing to make edits, so I thought you know. Yeah. Just no, I'll I'll take care of that. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, mentorship. So I had just proposed to not use italics here, <laughs> just kind of in an effort to be consistent. So this is mentorship. Yeah, uh, where is the italics? Down here, oh, references oh, yeah. for some reason. I'll just get rid of that. It's the only reference bullet point that is italics out of all the metrics, so easy enough. Yeah. Any thoughts on this one? Kevin, Don, Matt, Sala? I think mentorship is an older one. I think it was released last time. Yeah. If I recall. Yes. Yeah. This one, it seems pretty clear. So I think it was mostly just getting it into the proper 
template or the new template. Yeah, oh. I think I've noticed this duplicate line under server mentors and mentees. That's all I can see though. As a Where is this? Can you? Uh, yeah, like uh, survey men, men, right where your cursor is, uh -huh. two lines down, there's a second okay. redundant uh, entry. Okay. Yeah. No, but otherwise it looks really good. Okay. okay. Is, uh, is mentorship always linked to diversity and inclusion or is this or is this a, a metric that would uh, that could be linked to diversity and inclusion but could also stand alone I believe so yeah the second part like it, it applies in diversity and inclusion I think everything applies in diversity and inclusion at some point because you know open source is like people in code <laughs> so if it's not just code then uh, it would have diversity and inclusion uh, components to it, right? I mean, it, you're, yeah, and I think the question, Kevin, that you're kind of getting at, like, is this a common metric? So the way it's written here, it is written as a, a diversity and inclusion yeah, metric, which, which I think is completely fine. Uh, but would it, would it be helpful to add a kind of a disclaimer sentence that says something to the effect of mentorship is a, like this document is framed as a as a diverse as a diversity and inclusion issue. However, mentorship is a metric that can be measured uh, for yeah for common or sure. I don't I don't know if that would would be helpful or could you or if it's even needed. So would that be under description for you? Yeah, I think I, I think it would be under description. It's just a just a probably be just a simple sentence that says mentorship is a mentorship is a metric that can be used to measure such and such. Uh, this document frames mentorship in the context of diversity and inclusion. Could I ask you to just put that in a pull request and link it to the issue? Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, there, there's a, a fundamental question though here that it's actually very, very, it's a very good, uh, um, like it's a good thing that you raised this um, because it really feels that diversity and inclusion falls under um, um, collaborators or something like, like any aspect of a project that has to do with, um, you know, tracking for for a collaborator to join, to be part, to evolve, and to you know uh, move on. I I think it. I don't know. Maybe I'm not aware of the particular work group, groups enough, uh, but it seems to be a very specific, like it's the people aspect of the project. Um, um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess uh, we're still warming up for 2020. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's important to keep DNI as it's. I don't. I don't think we want to collapse it as part of the other working groups. Oh no no no. Yeah, so I think it's important to kind of bring keep bringing it forward as a critical component of the health. Yeah, as a standalone. Yeah, I, I think the question could is not whether or not to collapse it. But whether or not DNI would have subsections in all metrics across other groups that have I see and components. That's a fair. That's a fair comment. Yeah, I'll write. I'll, I'm not. Let's not do that this release. But that's a good. Uh, comment. Like yeah, the, yeah, just just uh, I yeah, I'm I'm more of a you know abst abstraction kind of person. Yeah. So. Uh, this is something that it comes up a lot actually when we're defining the metrics and a lot of times we find ourselves defining a metric instead of defining the diversity and inclusion aspect of that metric and it does really kind of overlap with all of the working mm -hmm. groups so that's something that we yeah i think we struggle with all all the time when we're defining the dni metrics yeah so 
Um, okay. So let's move so, on. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. So, uh, I mean, so based on this conversation, I'm actually, I'm, I'm maybe walking back that a bit. Maybe I, maybe we don't need to, to edit it. Uh, I guess my, my thought on it would be to make it just a little bit more generalizable, uh, but still have the DNI focus. Uh, but if when, as, as Don said, when you're, when you're defining these metrics, you, you have a focus on defining them within the DNI context, like, uh, so would, would the proposed edit that I have, does that go against that, uh, the, the, the DNI, uh, focus basically. So, so the Does proposed edit sense? would, um, yeah, I think so. So the proposed edit would really just kind of be a statement at the end of the description that says the work that you're basically, the work that you're reading here is kind of done in light of DNI or in the light of DNI. Mm -hmm. However, mentorship could be applied in a variety of different ways. Or understood okay. in different ways. Is that right? So just kind of a kind of a disclaimer line that that makes the metric generalizable without yeah, but then changing the maybe, context. But then maybe to your point, that would be a line we would add for everyone. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but maybe we don't need to even bother with that. Yeah. So, I I mean it's it's a good point if you're printing this as a book that you know this will be part of your. Uh, folio or like your header or footer, uh, the head or whatever they call them in print, I forget. Uh, like when, when you double click in Word and you put the page number. Um, uh, so, so usually when you print a book, you put the chapter and the uh, section texts somewhere in, in your footers. Um, it, over here, it's basically the breadcrumbs that you see on GitHub. Um, they make it very clear you're in the DNI repo, you know, it's implied. Um, but I guess, um, are there other views for that metric on the website, maybe, you know, that we want to make sure there's a, um, a breadcrumb or a trail or a header or a footer or whatever that, that kind of indicates that you're, you're in the DNI part of this world, um, just for visibility. Yeah. Um, why don't, um, can we table this discussion until the next time? And so Kevin, that would mean that don't add the statement. Yeah. So I, I've made a few notes just kind of on my own pad of paper here. Um, so let's just table that until we get through this release. So the next one is code of conduct for a project. I also think that this was part of the last release. Kevin, yes, it was. correct me. Okay. So again, the efforts were really fundamentally just getting this into a new template. This one has been fairly well thought up, uh, thought through mm -hmm. over, over time. So if anybody has, um, actually I did see resources that needs to be references. Okay, um, I'll make that change and I, um, um okay. quick yeah. question about procedure. Are we allowed to just like edit against like click on the edit doc and just make a word change right there without a PR? Is that uh, the you the for traceability make a PR? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um I'm gonna move on. So board and council diversity, I think this is a new one. 
Is that correct? Yes. Yes, this is new. So thoughts on the top part? Sala, you're muted if you're talking. Uh, yeah, just remove the, from the title, there's governance dash. Yep, I have yeah. that, or at okay. least I have it. I don't think it's in the issue, but that's why I highlighted it. So I just can copy it and put it in the issue. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm pretty sure I should have a fork from the- Oh, I already have it in there. It's an issue. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was trying to, you know, um, pitch in, but I didn't know what to pitch in with other than be talking. So I just felt lazy. Oh, I got <laughs> that one. I'll make that fix. All right. So as I, as I kind of wrap these up, would people on the call kind of mind if I equally just ping you to give a sign off on the, or a looks good to me kind of comment. And I just usually like to have a little, okay. again, trace. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've kind of been through them here. So we're agreeing in principle as we move forward, it's just to document it in, in GitHub, that's all. Yeah, one of the rest of us can take a look and merge it. Okay, thank you. Um, speaker demographics. Oh, I guess that's another thing I want to put on the agenda. Um, I think speaker demographics was from the first release as well, Kevin. Yes. Okay. So again, probably just a retemplate here. I'm, sh I'm not sure. I know I changed nothing in terms of the text. Um, Yeah, it seems the only change was a bullet point that was added, maybe on line 18, if I'm not mistaken. Where is this, Sala? Uh, just on, um, in uh, two sample objectives. Hold on, because I'm, I'm looking at a different view from my end. Okay. Uh, no, forget about it. I'm, I, I don't think I'm, uh, okay. I'm, I'm digesting the view well at this point, so. Okay. Um, this is a small issue and not one that I want to solve now, but every now and then our description, if you haven't noticed, the descriptions are text narrative. The objectives are often text narrative, but every now and then we go back and forth with bullet points. There's just a tiny, tiny bit of inconsistency um, throughout the metrics. I'm afraid I can't, I don't have, I'm not going to have the time this week to track all that down and rewrite these, but it's just something we want, I want to keep on. This is broadly, it's maybe it's the paper writer in me. <laughs> Keeping everything parallel is kind of important. It might be worth including it in the issue in case someone has time to okay. convert it from bullets to, to narrative, yeah, but maybe just make it clear that it's not a requirement for release of the metric that that be changed. But that way at least we don't forget about it. So I'll make that tiny changes and who knows, maybe I'll, maybe while I'm changing resources to references, I'll be so inclined to <laughs> rewrite the bullet points. Um, family friendliness. Don't remember if this was new or old, Kevin. It's, it's old. Just for the record, uh, all of the remaining metrics are, are from the first release. 
Okay. And they all probably have bullet points. Um, in working on the DNI badge, this one was my favorite because it had a lot of questions to work with. Okay, <laughs> good. Nice comment. Again, um, probably to, to Kevin's point, I actually thought in the first release, the DNI working group was honestly one of the most thoughtful groups in terms of putting together the metrics. So I think that a lot of these uh, initial release, you know, they're released in version one are going to be pretty solid, just retemplated where no text was lost. All right. Um, I'll make that change. Family friendliness, um, diversity access tickets. Again, small comment on me. Resources versus references at the bottom. Same deal, should be pretty solid all the way through, to be honest with you. Some nice thoughtful work. All right, hearing none, I'm moving on. Um, two more, code of conduct at event. From the last release, this one was actually the one I thought was the most complete okay. uh, code of conduct at event I thought was well done. Okay. Kind of like following Robert's rules of order here for minutes, like hearing no objections, we just move on. <laughs> hearing none. All right. Again, a small change on my end. And then attendee demographics. Hey, here's a narrative form. So I think this is really just um, picking up the speaker demographics or whichever was first, kind of following the same style, but taking a look at the attendees, not just the speakers in particular. All right. Um, great. So I'll make those changes. Like I said, I'll just ping a few of you on the pull request, but you should see a lot of them are just kind of structural issues, just some, some wording things um, here and there. Um, and that's great. And the release notes, I, this is something that I'm supposed to be doing. Do we have any? Is it, mm -hmm. is it just sponsorship? Is sponsorship the only new one? No, nope. uh, sponsorship and board council diversity. Maybe. Are the two new ones? So that could be a note. Uh, what were they, sponsorship? Sponsorship and board council diversity. Okay. I'm pretty sure those are the only two new ones. Okay. Uh, and then additionally, uh, changes were made to the, uh, the template, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll kind of do that. So. Like for every working group, template every the new template. All right. Um, any other comments on this? Thank you, everybody, for for kind of pushing these forward and taking a look at them and catching these uh, these issues moving forward. Appreciate it. I'm going to stop my share for a second here. Um, in the so the DNI badging program, um, let me take a note. Let me take just a few seconds here on making a note. In the question before we start, should I go ahead and make the repository public so that it's viewable for everyone? I, I figure that's a dumb question, but <laughs> um, no, it's not a dumb question because I don't. Of course you can. Okay. So, okay, so um, Matt has been working, for those of you that don't know, one of the, the big issues is 
across all the working groups is how do we develop these metrics as you saw here in text form um, and then how do we get them to actually be implemented in practice or or actually you know change the way that people uh, understand community health and certain metrics are perhaps a little bit more uh, inclined for that so the metrics in evolution may be a little bit easier to deploy because they're asking things around issues or pull requests trace data that we can get oftentimes from from github or GitLab, different repositories the dni metrics are naturally a little bit more challenging because they don't really um, have that type of data so they require a little bit more human effort so what matt has been working on is a way to take a look at uh, badging around diversity and inclusion such that a project could request a badge based on their demonstrated um, based on them demonstrating that they have say a code of conduct or that they're family friendly or that they're I guess that would be for an event. Um, but kind of the, the metrics that we have in, in DNI, that the project or an event could demonstrate that they are collecting data uh, around these metrics. Um, does this make sense so far? So the, the metrics in isolation may not be very meaningful, but when we start putting them into practice, they can start having a positive, positive, positive effect in the world. And DNI is a little bit harder um, to do this with. So the idea here is that um, that a project is say going to run an event and they would like to badge their event. They would like to do DNI badging for their event. So they would come to GitHub. This would all be done out in the open, completely publicly in a repository and they would put in a request to, to receive a DNI badge for their event, whatever that event might be. Um, the badge is based on, for an event, Matt, what, what metrics were you using? Was it family friendliness? Uh, I was using conduct. all five event metrics. Code so that'd be um, attending demographics, code of conduct at event, diversity, uh, diversity access tickets, family friendliness, and speaker okay. demographics. So all of the chaos effort that went into defining the uh, DNI event metrics are uh, metrics that as a applying event, you would have to demonstrate that you're attending to in some form or fashion, right? The review of that would then occur publicly. So say Sala, you submitted an event that said, hey, we would like to receive a DNI badge and we have an event code of conduct. We are family friendly. We monitor attendee demographics, we monitor speaker demographics, and we provide diversity access tickets. You, you, you make the claim that you do all of these five things, right? And so give me a, a DNI badge for the event. Um, in this case, we'd have to have reviewers, a little like academic papers, and I'll just look at Don. So Don would actually be a reviewer for your claims. So you would provide a link to the code of conduct for the event. Don would take a look at it and say, yeah, that's a very reasonable code of conduct for an event I approve. She would take a look at your claim of being family friendly. And she may say, actually, you, you, the statement that you provide has nothing to do with family friendliness. So I, I don't actually approve that. Why don't we kind of work on something that could kind of demonstrate that family friendliness a little bit more clearly for your event and so on and so forth down the list. So the intention here is to be, as projects are applying for a badge for their project themselves or for an event, that this is a, a um, very open and transparent process by which you receive the badge. Does this make sense? Yes, no? There, there's a lot to be done here, right? I mean, this is not done by any means. So th this, is a, this is a proposal to, as a way to get the the event DNI metrics and the project DNI metrics in a, in a more um, to get them out there in a, in a more concrete way. So what Matt provided here, um, 
Well, I can speak to the repo if you want. Yeah, why don't you speak to the repo, Matt? Okay, so um, some there's probably going to be some inconsistencies as I start out, um, but right now there's an event folder and a project folder, and the big folders that I've been working on are criteria per category, which um, host all the metrics, kind of like what I pulled out of the metrics that I found relevant to the event badging or the project badging. Um, if you go to issues and you create a new issue, I've got templates and those are the most recent data. Um, and I kind of had two approaches that I went at this with. Um, I, for events, I had a more granular approach where I was uh, asking for um, information about the demographics of the, of the event or uh, asking for statements on every metric. And then on project, I had more of an approach of, um, I'm going to ask you a few yes or no questions, but I'm going to ask for some, um, some like, document public documents or information about sentiment analysis things like that on the project itself so i'd like to know what people think about both the approaches and what's more um, what they find more relevant to the badging itself um i i have i've used every metric for project which some of them were not finished at this point but i use every metric for event as well from the dni um, working group um could I ask, because uh, I'm, I'm just trying to visualize this, um, is it possible to share your screen and just uh, um, run us through the uh, alternatives being proposed? Because I, I, I kind of... Uh, yeah, I can share my screen today. or Matt, you can do it. Sure, I can share my screen. Okay. So how, how, would, a, how would a project provide sentiment analysis, by the way? Sentiment analysis information. How would they how would they go about doing that? So let's do SALAS first. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that in just a second. So I'm going to go to a new issue. And um, like if I go to an event submission, I'm asking, I, these are just kind of questions I pulled out of the metric at this point, but I'm asking for more um, like, does the event website host a code of conduct? And a bunch of stuff about the website for a lot of metrics because that's publicly available. But then there's some questions where I ask more demographic-based information, like um, how many speakers identify with, you, with each of the racial backgrounds listed on your event's demographic survey. And that's not questions. I'm not sure if these questions would be relevant as much as it is. I just need to find out that they're measuring the metrics that we yeah. provide um, in, that, in that specific sense. Um, so a lot of this information is more, mostly website available, though. So go back. Sure. Go back one. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, the yeah. templates. Yep. So, Sala, the initial workflow again, it's to do it out in the open, right? So you would, instead of like event submission, project submission, it would you know be request event badge, request project yeah. badge, and so you would get started on either one. So just yep. And so you as the requester of the badge would fill out the issue. So you would change the project name. And so I, what, I, what I kind of envision happening here is really just attending to the metrics that DNI has released with respect to events and projects. And I think that sometimes, Matt, the level of detail you have here maybe might be too, too detailed. So I think sometimes you could just ask, like, what, you know, can you provide a link to your event code of conduct? Period. Okay. I was thinking I could do it a little less detail because it became a laundry list at one point. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then like even like speaker demographics, you can ask the question, are you collecting speaker demographics? And if so, how? Okay. Um, are you collecting attendee demographics? And if so, how? And perhaps, you know, do you report these numbers? I, something along these lines. Are you providing family friendliness at your event? If so, could you describe the process and provide a link to how you demonstrate this family friendliness. Does that make sense, Sala? So I think, 
so Sala, you would start this issue making the claims that you are attending to these metrics as an event organizer or as a project manager. And then somebody like myself would come in on that issue and actually kind of confirm your assertions. And so it's you, also okay to say I'm not, I don't have any information on it, but I'm, we're working on it. And it's, it's really kind of as, as simple as, as that. So, so uh, yeah, I, I was trying to look at it from a UX standpoint. The person mm -hmm. opening the issue would know, uh, would, would have a read me before, before being diverted to open the issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause, cause the um, uh, template itself, um, like, I wish GitHub issue templates actually allowed you to say, listen, there's no box. There's like fields that you fill out. And uh, we just, you know, put that stuff together in a well-structured markdown format, you know, mm -hmm. this way. I, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be exotic forms, just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just uh, a name for everything you enter and, and whether or not you need to enter it. Um, but but the way it is mingled with Markdown, yeah. So it helps that the person reads uh, readme.md. Yes. Um, just uh, they could very much delete part of the template by mistake. Uh, is is one of the biggest flaws in this kind of like here's the text box and it has a template. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so, the the reason that we're that we had kind of been drawn to GitHub is just. From a process perspective, it enables it to be completely in the open using an approach that other people are familiar with. And we think we can get away with just using issue tracking to get this done. Yeah. Uh, so what, what I've been uh, thinking about every now and then is, um, well, if, if you have a GitHub repo with issues, uh, you just need a very, very dumb, uh, no framework web form that basically uses uh, the GitHub APIs to open the issue mm -hmm. on your behalf and take you to the issue once it's built in. I, you know, it's not my, my original idea, like the idea I've seen, I think, implemented at least with um, some JavaScript tools. Um, they give you, you know, in their, in their demo, in their web demo, you can say, okay, there's a glitch here, open an issue, and it populates the issue um, with information would uh, that would that um would that bury the conversation after the initial submission? Because that's the other part that is I think super critical here. That this is that your assertions, you know, towards a project or an event are openly discussed. Oh, it just yeah. creates the issue and then from there yeah. on it's a regular issue that you okay. can really type. Um okay. I, I, I think it just it's it's sugaring as they call it in JavaScript. Yep. You know, you just say, uh, okay, remove the manual interaction with the box, but you might as well just manually interact with the box if you want. Yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah. Um, I, I'd be willing to, you know, I I'm, I'm just trying to find something I'm good at, um, and I can contribute with. Um, mm -hmm. You know. There uh, you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, you know, this is something um, I'm, I'm just proposing right now, and yeah. I would love to be, you know, following up um, on this um, more, in a more structured approach. Yeah, that would be great. I think um, that's a really good idea. I've also worked with that API with Global Consent Manager too before. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, so if, if we're going to do this offline. Uh, so, I guess Matt, I, I would connect with you on that. Yeah. Should I open an issue against yeah. the repo that you linked? <laughs> like, but but there is no template for opening an issue that is neither, right? Uh, <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> all right, I'll I'll do the one with a fork. I like that one. I think so. The biggest one of the, I think getting this working is going to be a process in itself. The other real concern that I have with this and something just to think about is it it will require reviewers. So there's a, a human component in here that is necessary. So you're, I mean, it's a little like academic papers. I mean, you're asking for people's time to contribute to the review of a project submission or an event submission. And I think the bar is fairly, 
um, low because there's not a ton of metrics. You know what I mean? And some of them are probably pretty straightforward. So it's just something that I have on the back of my mind. So I think if we really do move forward with this, we're going to have to think well beyond the chaos project in terms of folks who would be willing to provide um, editorial services. So, so uh, since those will be issues, um, I believe uh, under the org settings, you, you could actually um, set up teams mm -hmm. and set up certain teams to always be notified about. Yeah, we're going to have to do something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've been playing around with that, but I mean, the teams usually get notification from yeah. me. Yeah, mine, so. mine is less on a technical issue. It's more on the, the social capital that's required on something like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just the bandwidth. There are so many Correct. of us involved that are so incredibly busy that Correct. do we actually have the bandwidth? What happens if we submit this? What happens if we launch this badging program and we get 200 submissions? Correct. It's a, who's it's gonna, a, it's yeah, a who's concern. gonna review those? <laughs> um, Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> or what if we badge something as diverse and uh, it comes back with uh, some criticism of the event not being diverse or the... These are just, these are... Back to the social capital issue. Yeah, I mean, these are issues that are certainly gonna have to be addressed moving forward. I, I still, I don't think they prevent a, pos a positive move forward here. Yeah, um, we, we, we could make a badge for thumbs down, like, you know, like uh, make a badging program for, for projects that get a thumbs down, then they would have the DNI badge and the thumbs down badge. <laughs> the hope is, <laughs> the hope is that everybody who submits for a badge, whether for their project or for their event, um, can go through a constructive process by which <laughs> they can, they can ultimately receive that badge, but again, that's that's more work, right? So if somebody has a bad code of conduct at an event, that takes effort for somebody like you know Don to point out what a good code of conduct might look like and how they might go about kind of integrating that into their event. It's just it's time. Um, so the the hope is that this is a developmental process all along. But I, I do firmly believe that it's it's things like this that are going to be needed at times to get the DNI metrics into concrete form and to get them to have meaning in the world. So, um, all right. So that's that's that. This is the first look at this. I'm gonna I'll be at ChaosCon. I'll, I, my whole talk is on this. So a lot of hopefully there's a lot of feedback um, at ChaosCon on this and have a few things to show. So. Yeah, this is really a great start, Matt. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, that Matt. The other Matt, not yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, all right. So um, like I mentioned briefly, just in the last five minutes here, the Outreachy program. Uh, there, I do have a couple DNI projects. Do you remember Google Summer of Docs? Do you remember when we put together a couple proposals for Google Summer of Docs? Anybody? There were a, a few that came out of DNI. I'll have more information probably on this later. I don't have a ton to say right now, other than I've started the, the proposal. Um, and then the other thing is I did receive the, some of the conference data from the Linux Foundation. Do you remember this conversation? So they had asked us to start help helping them take a look at some of their data so they can get a better handle on uh, really DNI and kind of, I think really the demographics of the, the conferences as a whole, um, not just, um, you know, gender related issues. Um, so um, Vinod, who's not on here, has, has kind of worked through some of that data and I shared it back with, with Angela. So I, I'm excited to, to share it with everybody here. I'm going to just kind of logistically, I'm going to wait for Angela to kind of say, okay, but so that process is now occurring. And the other cool thing is, is we have, um, some of this data for the most recent conferences, and it's now something that we can start setting timelines against so we can see changes over time. So kind of excited about that as well. Like we can get this slice right now, which as you know, is sometimes not super meaningful, but as we see these changes over time, that's where meaning really starts to kind of come forward. Um, so that, that was pretty exciting. Um, well, we have four minutes. Um, 
timing, if, if you want. <laughs> if we want to change the time of the meeting, I am completely more than happy to do that. I'm generally quite available, except Mondays, honestly, outside of other chaos meetings and Mondays and Wednesdays from 1030 to 1145 US Central, basically right now. So I'm gonna go, prob ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the the this meeting moved from uh, I know it was a nine thirty to an eleven. I know on Mondays, and the the problem with that move is that it moved out of the the nine o'clock space, and the risk working group moved into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah, it might be worth doing another doodle poll. Why don't I do that? Because the, the last poll that we did, I think, to move this meeting, I think part of the problem was we just kind of counted the numbers and didn't really take into account the people who are most active mm -hmm. and actually attending. And so I think we, with the doodle poll, we probably need to prioritize some people Why higher than just, others. Why don't I just do that? Yeah. And we may just have to revisit some of these meetings. On a, I mean, as many of us are on academic calendars, my, you know, our schedules just kind of shift every now and then with class, <laughs> like immovable objects. <laughs> well, and this meeting is particularly problematic because we have regular contributors who are based on the west coast of the US and yes. those of us in Europe. So um, time zones are hard. Yes, they are. Um, and, right, and I'd really like, because I think Emma is going to, I think she's doing some work as well um, on some of the DNI stuff. She and I had been kind of chatting, and I'd really like to get her back included in these meetings as well. I would love to see her more active again. Yep. Um, okay, so I'll just I'll send out a poll again to the to the group, and if we can't find a time and just have to keep it here, I'll just continue to participate when I can, and offline. So, all right, everybody, I'm getting really excited to see folks in Brussels. That'll be cool. I know it's gonna be fun. It'll be totally fun. Um, are you going to sustain, Don? I am. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll be in Brussels starting on. Tuesday evening because I'm going to be there for a to-do group meeting on Wednesday and then okay. sustain and then chaos con. And then are you sticking around for FOSDEM or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got a talk in the community dev room. It's not a, it's not a metrics talk or a DNI talk. It's a talk about um, building open source communities okay. around your. I, know, I knew this now that you're saying corporate it. Yeah. Open source projects. Yeah. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I'll be there the whole week. Right on. All right. Well, um, so I, we'll meet next week cause that's still Monday. I, I head out on Tuesday or Wednesday, one of those days. So I'll, I'll see be you. around. Okay, we'll see you then. Matt, do you do you have a second? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Are you in? Are you on campus? Bye, everybody. Bye. I'm, I'm, not, Bye. I'm not. Yeah, I'll just stick around on this channel. What's up? Oh, let me stop recording real quick. Oh yeah.